All right, you guys, we are now going to be starting some parallel line proofs, which is super exciting because I love parallel lines and I love proofs. So might as well do a parallel line proof, right? All right, so in this one, we are given that line L is parallel to line M. And I marked my picture with these two nifty arrows, which tells me that your lines are parallel. Okay, now, so since lines are parallel, Okay, you can use any of those angle pair properties that we talked about. So, if corresponding angles are congruent, you can use the corresponding angle postulate. If same side interior angles are supplementary, then you can use the same side interior angle theorem. If you know that alternate exterior angles are congruent, guess what? You can use the alternate exterior angle theorem. All right, now, there's one catch and one angle pair I haven't mentioned. So you're probably like, well, Miss Long, you can also say that alternate interior angles are congruent by the alternate interior angle theorem. Well, unfortunately, this time we can't, and it's all because of our proof. We are trying to prove that four and six are congruent. If you see, four and six make the Z shape. If you want to trace over those, they make the Z shape which are alternate interior angles. So I'm trying to prove that alternate interior angles are congruent, which means I'm proving the alternate interior angle theorem. Because and whenever you're trying to prove a theorem or a postulate of some sort, you cannot use it in the proof. It's kind of like when you have a definition, you try not to use the word you're defining in the definition because that is not very helpful and it's actually very aggravating when that happens because I'm like ooh I want to look at this word I look it up and it says the word and I'm like well that did not help me at all guys so we want to be helpful people so we are not going to use the alternate interior angle theorem in the alternate interior angle theorem proof okay so we have to get there another way which is going to be super exciting since I have angle three in our picture, maybe somehow I can find a similar relationship between angle 4 and 6 and angle 3, which might help me to show that 4 and 6 are congruent, but we'll have to see. All right, guys, let's get going. Guys, so we always write the given first, and I'm given that line L is parallel to line N, so this will be the given. Okay, so again, somehow I need to use this 3, so I can eventually show that 4 and 6 are congruent. Okay, so I'm going to look at 4 and 3 first. What do 4 and 3 form when you put them together? So if I trace over 4 and 3, they're right here. What do those two form when you put them together? <gasps> they form a line, which means they make a linear pair. And if they make a linear pair, that means they are supplementary. So I can say angle 4 and angle 3 form a linear pair and are supplementary. And how I know that is because that's what it means to be a linear pair. So my reason would be definition of a linear pair. Whoa. So far, so good. So definition Sorry, guys, I'm slacking on my writing right now. Of a linear pair. Man, my Fs are struggling today. Sorry, guys. All right, so again, it is helpful if we can grab words from either previous statements or from the given to help us move forward in the proof. Do you see any key phrases in this statement that might help me to add another line to my proof? <gasps> I see it too, you guys. Do you guys see the word supplementary? What does it mean to be supplementary? It does mean that they add up to be 180. So I can now define what it means to be supplementary, which means the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 3 should add up to be 180. And that is by my definition of the word supplementary. So definition of supplementary. All right, we're making headway on this thing. Okay, now I've kind of like, I can't really do anything else with four and three. Like, I've exhausted everything I can do with four and three. So again, I have a relationship with four and three on my paper. Now it might be good to introduce a relationship with six and three because in four and six relate to three in the same way, they have to be congruent. So 
I'm going to trace over my picture again, which I know you're like, Miss Long, this is getting crazy. I'm going to trace over three and six. All right, so what letter do you guys see forms when I trace over three and six? <gasps> I see the C, too, you guys. You guys see the C? Probably C for cat, right? <laughs> but anyways, poor slapper. Um, but anyway, so um, which angles form the C shape? That would be same side interior angles. And remember, the only theorem I cannot use are alternate interior angle theorem because... That is what I'm trying to prove. So I can use the same side interior angle theorem. Okay, so before I can use the theorem, I must declare first that I have found some same side interior angles. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to declare that 3 and 6 are same side interior angles. Angle 3 and angle 6 are same side interior angles. And how I know that they're same side interior angles, well, they make the C shape and they line the correct spot. So we're defining the word same side interior angles. So this would be definition of same side interior angles. Same side interior angles. All right, now, how do same side interior angles relate to each other? Holy hot dog, they are supplementary. And I know that because that is the same side interior angle theorem. Guys, so I know that angle three and angle six are supplementary. And that would be because of the same side interior angle theorem. Same side interior. Well, there shouldn't really be a dash there. Sorry, guys. Same side should have a dash, not interior. Jeez Louise, Miss Long, get your life together. One day I'll get it together, Miss Long. All right, but anyway, same side interior angle theorem. The theorem tells me they're supplementary. So remember, if I can grab words from my statements, that might help me to move forward. Do you guys see anything? Guess what? I see the word supplementary again. What does it mean to be supplementary? Well, like we said earlier, it means they add to be 180. So guess what, you guys? I can say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 will add up to be 180. And that is by my definition of supplementary. Definition of supplementary. All right, so now I have shown a relationship between angle 3 and 6 as well as angle 4 and 3. And if you guys see here, if I'm looking here, okay, both of these equal 180. Okay, so I have two statements. I have 4 plus 3 equals 180 as well as 3 plus 6 equals 180. Okay, so using these two statements right here, if they both equal 180, wouldn't they have to equal each other because they equal the same thing? <gasps> yes, they would. All right, which there's two ways you can look at this. Since this equals 180, I could replace this 180 with 3 plus 6 and slide it right there. Okay, or I could use the transitive property. I could say if 4 plus 3 equals 180 and 180 equals 3 plus 6, then 4 plus 3 equals 3 plus 6. So whatever floats your boat, you can either use substitution or the transitive property to state that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6. So again, either the transitive property or the substitution property. Substitution property. I gotta say it proper because it's a property. All right, guys. So now I'm getting really close to showing that four and six are congruent. Okay, but currently in my statement right here, this three is getting in the way of me showing that four and six are equal, which means they're congruent. So what can I do with this annoying little three right here to make it go away? I want it to vanish off my paper. I'm done with it. I'm tired of it. 
Yes, you guys always know the answer. You're so bright and talented. I'm so proud of you. You're just great. I love all my students. They're so smart and wonderful. Okay, so I am going to subtract the measure of angle 3 on both sides of my equation. So 3 minus 3 cancels and turns to 0, as well as on this side. Okay, so what I'm left with, I'm going to write it over here because I kind of took up all the space right here. I wasn't using my space wisely. Okay, so now I can say that the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 6. And that is because well, I subtracted the measure of angle 3 on both sides of my equation. So guess what, you guys? I used the subtraction property. Subtraction property. Okay, guys, we're so close. I can smell the finish line. We're almost there. I can smell it. Okay, so I've shown that the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 6, which that means that they are congruent because if two things are congruent, if two angles are congruent, their measures have to be equal. Okay, so I know that because they equal each other, they have to be congruent because that is what it means to be congruent. Okay, so what is it called when you change an equal sign to congruent or vice versa? Or if we're describing what it means to be congruent, it would be our definition of congruence. Definition of congruence. And guess what, you guys? We have reached our proof, which means we have reached the end. So we're super happy. Nice job, you guys. That was great.